Hello and welcome to Fatito's Gang. If you were with us some weeks ago, you know that the gang discussed corruption in Nigeria, how it all started, and why it still exists today. On today's episode, the gang will discuss how we can move forward. Stay tuned. We're back. And the uh, story has not changed too much. A couple of weeks ago, we were out here talking about corruption, the big challenge of corruption. But the big question is, is this a project outsourced to a gentleman called Ibrahim Mag? Is it possible for the Nigerian people to take ownership of this big problem, knowing that it affects all of us, all of us? Nigeria is significantly the way it is because of corruption. The perception of our national character around the world, deeply, deeply sad. How can we move forward with the war on corruption? Not as a game played by people of power to use to get their enemies, not as a game played by bureaucrats who can do this but can't do that, not as a game played by people who want to create a circus in the media, because many times it's a media circus, but as something that the people own to make sure that the quality of life their children live is better than the one that they have lived. How do we take ownership of the war? Nigeria the war. is bleeding under the heavy weight of corruption. That's why you're wearing and red. Yes. So the right. blood is just and pouring on yes, you. Yes, and we've almost been bled white. Yeah, yeah. So if, I can see red and white. Yes, if, <laughs> if we don't kill corruption, corruption will kill us. Mm -hmm. Yes, you have rightly observed. Look at our health facilities, the decay in the system. And so that's why you find a lot of people going out to treat themselves. Education, we've talked about strike, uh, public school has been destroyed, several things. Roads, you see that day in, day out, our people are dying. And when people realize that our people have always continued to agonize, oh, the war against corruption, what is happening in Nigeria, the decay, the pe but, people will continue to break. But, but, but the question is, is, you, but the question uh, is yeah. long as we agonize, yeah. Yeah. What, where is the deterrence that yeah. will make people not to engage in acts of corruption when we come to define but, yeah, but you're talking about what deterrent and all of that. Uh, it seems to me there is not, it's not a question of deterrent anymore. This is a question of finding psychiatrists. People have gone mad. I agree. Uh, who, I in agree. normal senses, will take the kind of money that we are reading about newspapers? Well, we don't even have the, institu the psychiatric institutions. There's a friend of mine who talks about <laughs> corruption in Nigeria as a case of the inmates taking over the asylum. You know, the madness is real large. Oh. So, I think we, so we don't even have the psychiatric institutions. We need to <laughs> the institutions have been destroyed. Yeah, we so need because to it's an institutional fight. Instead of psychiatrists from somewhere. No, but beyond, <laughs> beyond that, beyond that, see, it's I, I'm rather passionate about corruption, but I don't talk much about it because the average Nigerian does not know what corruption is. Now let's be brutally frank. Oh, we have we, different explanations. If you I remove, understand if you remove bribery. And you remove stealing. Mm. Mm. The average Nigerian does not know what is left. They think that is that is That's not corruption. Yeah. And so when I like to discuss corruption, I like to use a synonym of corruption for the discussion. It makes it more robust. Let's use the word decay. Corruption means decay. Yeah. decay. The mm. systems have decayed. Mm. So let us talk about the decay of the systems. If you want to fight a systemic decay, you start by revamping the systems. Now, what are the systems? Prof said, mentioned uh, Magu's name. Incidentally, Magu is head of EFCC, and EFCC is not the institution that fights corruption. However, EFCC is the loudest noisemaker in the fight against corruption. Not noisemaker. Loudest yeah. trumpet blower. Let me not say noisemaker. Yeah. Trumpet blower. They are the ones at the forefront of the corruption fight. And people keep saying they are not succeeding because they are not equipped. They are not set up to fight corruption. ICPC is set up to fight corruption. We have the ICPC Act, the Independent Corrupt Practices Act. There's an act that addresses corrupt practices. EFCC's economic and financial crime, very closely related. Mm. EFCC's mission it, it, is about economic I, uh, and actually, terrorism uh, financing. Share, mm. share with you something yeah. in, in this regard and, and all these institutions. Oh. Um, shortly after 
General Basanjo was elected president in 1999, he thought that there was a need to streamline the agencies of integrity in government, as they were called. And he set up a very, very high-powered committee. He had Ma, um, President of NASIMA, uh, Amnesty International, a DIG, uh, uh, um, Sojia Pampa's group, Sojia Pampa was on it, uh, transparency in business, uh, big, big committee. I was part of this. Incidentally, I chaired this panel for like one year. There was Linton Neville from Transparency International in London, who was a member of that committee, was flying back and forth. I don't know how much this exercise cost the government of Nigeria, but it could be a few million, much more. Uh, Everybody was in the Hilton for months, working at this. The report was finished. Uh, the special advisor to the president on anti-corruption matters at the time, Ambassador Mecca Azikwe, was secretary cha chaperone of the process. I thought some pretty decent work was done of that. The problem I have is that I, I can't recognize that work, you know, in, in a manner of speaking. So we have the point that you've made here now, already an issue, interagency rivalry. And that's why the issue is that the people have to take ownership of that process. If yes. it goes to agencies of government, you will always have this thing for about interagency take, rivalry. For the people to take ownership of it, they must know what it is. The average Niger I'll give you some examples. Culturally, there are many things we define from the West as corruption that are contradictory to our culture. If the people take ownership of it, they will be confused. That confusion is rampant. Mm. On things like gifting, the, ICE, the Independent Corrupt Practices Act is very, very, very clear. It's one of the clearest acts you will read. It is very, very clear. Now, this institution to propagate knowledge is what? The educational institutions. But they're on strike. Mm. What that institution has decayed. If I say that institution is corrupt, people will start thinking of lecturers. No, that institution of education has decayed. If that institution of education has decayed, how do you propagate the education for people to learn how to fight corruption? You can't fight corruption. I mean, this is a fight, and there are casualties. I cannot see the casualties. I see a lot of movement. It's like running on a treadmill, but nothing is being achieved. But nothing. again, my, part of my quarrel of, with this whole corruption thing is that there are people who are just waiting to see casualties, that the body count... Not arrest. Casualty is not arrest. I'm no, talking I mean about prison. Arrest. I'm not even talking about prison. Uh, Casualties you know. being, we have a decay system. Mm. Casualties, this system has been removed mm. and replaced with one that works. It, what? Yeah. No, you know, when, when, when cancer is in metastasis, uh, the only thing that you can do is cut away those parts of the body and really you're not sure that, that it will casualty. not continue to, 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 to spread. Uh, but when we talk about Corruption, we're really talking about culture. How do we achieve culture change? Yes. And you need a massive initiative. Look, uh, those who are familiar with uh, organizational change and talk about changing organizations' culture, culture, know that one of the most difficult things to achieve is organizational change, a change of culture. But when it succeeds, it succeeds dramatically. It very often fails. But when it succeeds, it succeeds dramatically. But I have not seen a social engineering effort to get us to really... re imbibe re the culture. Yes. We think our values in terms of corruption. Like the point you're making about what is really corruption, most Nigerians don't really fully understand what's corruption. When you use discretion in a way that favors somebody that is not his due, you are corrupt. That's it. That's it. Mm. And, and our constitution, rampant, our constitution mm. ensures that that corrupt system is perpetuated. Yes. We call it federal character. We call it quota. Those our, things. Our constitution is, those, is, those, still, the constitution. is still flawed. But the only thing is that we don't have any. So our our corruption is corrupt. Except what, yes. I, I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, you, I like the word used in terms of changing the culture. Mm. What we have defined, what we have borrowed as a definition from the West mm. as corruption, is our culture. We're not talking of fighting corruption. We're talking of changing our culture. Oh. So it's not an agency matter. Mm -hmm. So if what is corrupt in the West is not corrupt in the East. For example, what America calls corruption, 
China does not call corruption, but we both, and the East culture, the, Chi the Asian culture is much closer to the Nigerian culture. But we have but not defined are, Chinese are our executing own, people every day for corruption. We have not you know? defined uh, our uh, own uh, corruption. So, yeah, and it's, it's very expensive to eradicate corruption. Prevention is better. better than and that is, yes, and, and, wait, wait, and that is why decay, if we talk about a, a system that is decayed, for instance, we are here now discussing if I'm a government worker and I did not take permission for my place of work and I'm here. It's corruption. If I'm driving along, I hear people laughing. <laughs> <laughs> what you are laughing. If, if if I'm driving along uh, the streets and I see somebody who just stops and is easing himself, but it's, that is corruption. You know. So we have started massive awareness, awareness, so that we can change some of these cultural beliefs, some of these mindsets of people, so that we can prevent. Corruption, at, at, the heart of, at the heart of this change. But you know, and, without trying to sound defeatist as yeah. if it is a done deal, is that despite the good intentions and efforts of the people to instigate a grounds of campaign as to say, what can we do? Mm. If we begin all of this process has have to be started in different groups and there is nothing the institutions of government do to curtail it, it comes back Clearly, to zero. everyone, everyone yes. has a role. Let's take a break. When we come back, let's look at the various roles that are critical for not just only ownership of corruption, but making it really work in a sustainable way. As we've heard from the gang's conversation, corruption is more than just bribery, tipping, or gifting someone. Also, there's some positive roles that each one of us can play in the reduction of corruption. Let's hear your views. Let's take it to the streets. When the government is saying that way, it will be reduced the number of people that are just driving to get there. I think corruption is our problem. It's not the government's problem. It's Corruption is Nigerian's problem. It's eaten deep to the grassroots. I was in a conversation yesterday with a senior colleague and we were analyzing the fact that the guy who sells handkerchiefs for you on the streets would take advantage of your ignorance and give you the nylon made handkerchiefs instead of the cotton fabric handkerchiefs if you are unsuspecting. The guy who's going to sell you rice, um, something as, as basic as rice, food in the market, would they have developed a measurement style that makes you think you're getting twice what you're getting actually. So yes, Nigerians can take ownership of corruption. It's, it begins with me, it begins with you, it begins with the decision to be transparent, to have integrity when you're dealing with other people. It is not a government problem. We are our own problem. The moment each of us fix our head, each of us takes the decision not to take advantage of other people, the country will fix itself actually. Everything is uh, about determination. Whatever you take um, ownership on, then you now have to go out of your way to make sure that you actually succeed in it. Corruption, what is corruption? Where does it start from? Corruption is doing things that we know should not be done. But we keep pointing fingers at others that, oh, this person is corrupt, this is corrupt. But what of we that are even pointing that finger? What are we doing to make sure that what we are preaching against, that we are not doing it? A lot of us believe that, oh, Corruption is it's a monster, actually. But it's something that we have to make conscious efforts to fight against. If you don't fight it, it will take control over you. If we are going to achieve fundamental culture change regarding the subject of corruption, one thing is certain, our institutions of socialization are critical. Among the most important institutions of socialization we have are the family, the schools, the typical, religious uh, uh, the, the, sorry, religious the religious schools. institutions, yes, religious. yes the uh, traditional uh, horizontal human development bodies like the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, and those kinds of things. These are fundamental to changing value frames. And so we need to work through how these play a role. We set up a national orientation agency for that express purpose, exactly how it is working, 
I don't particularly understand, but it is there as part of those agencies of, of socialization. Now, what roles should we be expecting? Let's start from the religious or faith-based institutions. Oh, oh. Now, if there's anything that is problematic, it is the role of faith-based agencies in socialization and corruption in our system. I mean, many of us have read how, on so many occasions, people took tens of millions from the organizations to give to their church or, or whatever. And, see, I, again, I, 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 I got into trouble once. I, I was sitting with a group of bishops and I was looking at, I referred to an early document. Just once. And I get into trouble all the time. <laughs> okay. you know, I, I referred to an early document of the, of the church, in the Christian, first, second Christian century. It's called the Didache. Well, Didache, but it's pronounced Didache. And one of the um, points in the Didache is that a bishop who accepts oblation from somebody who does not treat his workers well, <laughs> let him be anathema. When I said it, very jokingly. I can hear people laughing again. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I can say this publicly. It was the Cardinal on who said to me, Ah, you mean I'm an Anathema Bishop? <laughs> and I said, No, sir, at all, at all. I didn't say such. But, but you see, that's how far the early Christian church went to spell out who could give offering in church. Oh, oh. You brought your offering to church, and you were as much as known as somebody who does not treat your work as well. The bishop was under obligation not to accept your offering. But How do we get where we are I today? think flowing from that, we should use the pupils, the monks, to preach against decay. We should try... No, that one is to, we should, we should, Wait, wait, we should try about to name and shame those who perpetuate these seniors as because, like you have said, uh, Prof, you see that lots of these uh, religious homes that you use to mold people, that you use to change the mindset of people, Instead, we start treating this woman with kid gloves. And as a result of that, decay continues to thrive. Corruption continues to thrive. So let's use that opportunity because you find that religious homes, you see a lot of people, you know, moving there Fridays, Sundays. So if we can use that, I'm sure that it will go a long way in changing, you know, the mindset of people. And so thereby, if we, if we, can, we can then um, mm. uh, prevent rather than eradicating. If we can Option. find ways of incentivizing faith leaders to recognize that society is being crippled by corruption and that their role, not just in what they preach, but in the example they show and all of that is critical. That's one step. I, I agree with then, that step. However, I still think we need to agree that the fundamental responsibility of this sits on the government. Yeah. Okay, we'll get it to government, but, but you know, if we're going to get so total I, I, change, I there was the many family players. Is mm -hmm. Family, mm -hmm. so well, critical, schools. Mm -hmm. the fundamental responsibility. So, for example, a lot of people went to missionary schools. And I'm still one of those who say, I still can't understand how what we have as missionary schools today are entirely profit-driven. But that's a different discussion. But for me, that's part of the decay in the system. And one of the hardest things to fight about corruption, about decay, is when the value system decays. An immoral group of people are easier to deal with than the next generation, which would be amoral. Mm. Because immoral people know what they are doing is wrong, but they've deadened their conscience. Amoral people don't know it is wrong. So you will approach these people and tell them what they're doing, and they'll tell you no, it is not. They will argue with you, not because they're being deceptive, they genuinely... The conscience they, is here. It is mm. closed. Yeah. They're not even struggling. Mm. So we need to come back to the decay in the system is so bad. It's like you said, it's like a cancer. There are some cancers that are such part of your system, the doctor will tell you, live with it, but manage it. So we need to take an appraisal position and step back and say, what fight do we want to fight in this decay? What aspect are we going to say is cultural and we manage? What aspect are we going to tear off violently? What aspect are we going to close our eyes to till the future date? We have to strategize. Otherwise, you are fighting a fight you have not defined and you start fighting yourself. <laughs> but let me just, uh, before I forget, families that uh, Prof mentioned. In those days, I cannot bring a pencil that is not my home or oh, ruler. Yeah. I'll be putting silly. 
Mm. And my now you see uh, some of our young ones in school. Some who want to celebrate their parents. They want to do things. There will be no. But you know the circumstance so, now. When I was your, when I was in school, the same thing. I then my mother would, my father would go through all my things one by one and check. Yeah. Now parents are so busy checking livelihood. Mm. It's not that they don't know they should do it. They really don't have the time to do it. Mm. And that is the decay in the system. You have a job. Mm. Your contract says you will work eight to five. Mm. But your boss tells you to get to work at seven and you cannot leave before nine. That is part of a systemic decay. We and need to, know, and it affects I know, everything. I know, sometimes but I still believe we should, deal with honestly, some we should still problems. organize less and organize. If we don't organize, I, I, I quite agree. I don't think I'm going concurrently. I'm not agree. saying one after the other. No, no, I even quite agree with this decay you are talking about. But I still, honestly, I still blame parents who will not even find time for their words. You leave them at the mercy of house helps. Leave them at the end. You, when the children grow up, the, the parents will become total strangers. Why are these it's, parents it's, doing what they are doing? It, or it, supposedly? It's true that we have to earn a living. But we still need to find that time to uh, take care of... Until we yes. understand the nature of the decay we are talking about. Yeah. This particular fight cannot have be we won. Looked, with, have we looked ago, out, we have, we lo have we looked out... Households are suffering. Have we and looked, you say, have let we me be checking which oh, person brought No, but you can see... You <laughs> can, no, you can still find that it's time all, to do that. It's all connected. You see, that's the thing. The systemic decay is not in one particular sector. Everything is interlinked. And mm. we need to come out with a plan on how to address everything. We have 15 years maximum you know, to there fix are two educational things, problems. You know, there we are, don't fix it. I don't know what we're going to do. You know, there are two things you can't do at a time. Mm. You can't be looking down and looking up at the same time. No. And that's why there are two people. <laughs> so, we have no, I mean, ministers. No, we can no, be no, you, know where I'm, you know where I'm coming <laughs> from? Mm. Is that part of what we have continuously said we are going to do or we are doing is about what can we do? How can individuals play roles? Mm. How can we strengthen our institutions? How can we put pressures on government? But maybe we should even step, step back and ask ourselves, beyond our shores, how have other countries dealt with these issues? So that we can learn something. Yeah, we can do that. Hong and, Kong, and say, example. okay, this is a way to start afresh. We can do that. Because we haven't done it. But the Not simple thing, simple thing. We're about the same. Let, 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 is there a consequence for wrongdoing? But, but it's also Those are the kind of learning to raise, yes. to self, There's a consequence for wrongdoing and the pressure civil society should put mm -hmm. on the system to make sure those consequences apply. But very importantly, prevention is better than cure. The less government is involved in things, the less there will be corruption. Mm -hmm. Because the tragedy of the commons is government doesn't belong to the person who is managing it. Mm -hmm. So use of discretion is abused. Mm -hmm. And but if it's your private business, I mean, why is it? I mean, I've always thought of business. One of the reasons Nigeria's economy is not growing, and people don't realize this, is that the integrity deficit mm. in this culture is so high that in many businesses, unless you are sitting there from morning till night yourself, mm. the business will fail. Business will fail. Crumb. You know, I, I, many years ago, when the uh, Cyber Cafe business was about to start, we just went uh, uh, GSM and all of that, I invested in a franchise to develop outlets. Mm. Every day, if they didn't steal from the one in Ikoi, the they will steal from the one in Ikeja or the one, the, the cell phones, the that, 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 that. It's tragedy. But I, I, I was trying to sell mine off. So I, one of my neighbors who had two, you know, I was discussing with my wife or coming from church. Ah, when we get uh, home, I want to go across to this guy and say, look, can you buy this thing from me? I'm tired. And apparently the guy was coming from church, was following us. So as we were trying to pull up in front of our gate, he pulled up behind us. I said, ah, I was trying to see you to tell you about it. Ah, me too. I came to see if you will buy my own. <laughs> yeah. But I knew a guy who was running with his wife. Mm. They send their children to school everywhere on that one. Because if he was not there, his wife was there. The agency function, because of the integrity deficit in our system, mm. it's all ruined. And, that and deficit the price is mm. very high. Now culture. Very, very yeah, high. Let's, let's go to a break and come back. Corruption cannot be solved in one day, but it is our duty to use various institutions, schools, charities, or religious institutions to effect change in our communities. Well, that's all that we have time for today. Thank you for joining us.
Be sure to join the conversation. Follow us on all our social media platforms displayed right there on your screen. I am Nenna Jimye. Until next time, take care and be well.